Hi, this is Amy, and today I want to show you uh, the basics of getting started with Google Classroom. So uh, you can find this presentation online if you want that we're going to use today to look at this tool. Uh, you'll find it at bit.ly forward slash fried classroom, and that's with a capital F and a cap capital C. So um, you can find this presentation online. Uh, feel free to use it and um, teach your staff about Google Classroom. So this is where we're going to start. First we need to start with how to actually get to Google Classroom and there are two different, at least two different ways to do that. One way is just to navigate. Now remember Google Classroom is only available through your EDU Google account so if you don't have Google for education you can't get Classroom so that's an important kind of starting note. But if you have Google Apps for Education then you can get there by going to classroom.google.com Another way that you can get there is you can actually go into the App Store. So that's going to be this um, multicolored button in the top left of your Chrome browser. You can go into the store, find Classroom in the store, and install it right from there. So you'll just search right up here for Classroom. And then when you see it there, you'll just click the plus free button which will look like this and that will put it onto your apps chooser in your Chrome browser. So two different ways that you could get to Classroom. The next thing you'll do the first time that you go into Classroom is scroll down on that first page and then you will set your role to either teacher or student. Now if you are a student and you're watching this video don't go in and set your role as teacher. If you're a student you want to set your role as student and if you're a teacher you want to set it as teacher. So um, really important to start out with that right. The next thing that you're going to do is create a class and you're going to use the plus sign up in the top right here to create your first class. So um, here's the dialogue that will pop up and here's what I typed in for the example class that I have for you today. The next thing you're going to want to know about is how to get students into your class. So this is a really, really handy way that Google has set up here. So the first method that I want to tell you about is using the class code. So when you set up a class in your Google Classroom, I'm going to navigate to mine so that you can see what I'm talking about. On the first page of that class, you'll see the class code there on the left hand side. Now you can reset or disable that. Um, if you've used Edmodo before, this is very, very similar to the way Edmodo works with the code that allows students to join in your class. Um, the other way that you can do this though is to navigate to the students part. Um, it's kind of like a tab up here and then choose invite if you want. So if you have students in your domain, you can find them right through here just by typing in a partial name and then you can select those students from the list. Um, I like this option down here. You can even save them as a group. So if you wanted to do, uh, let's say you teach the same thing all day long and you wanted to have each of your classes in a group, then you could do it right here. You could set up first period right here. Now I'm not really sure what that's going to get you later on, but I'm hoping, thinking, maybe the ability to post only to that group or assign only to that group. Um, and so when you got them selected, you could click invite students and they could go back and repeat that process. So whatever way works for you, um, you can get students into your class. I think the class code's definitely the easier of the two methods. All right, the next thing you're going to want to do is select the theme. So you can see in this class, I've already done this once and I'm, I'm going to do it again to show you. So you want to go over to change class theme. That link is in the top right and um, you want to pick a picture to go with your class, especially if you have multiple different classes, you're going to want to select different pictures so that it's really obvious to you which class is which when you go back to your home screen because each of those is going to show as a different color, whatever that accent color is in the class. So it's really easy, no problem at all so far, and there won't be because this whole system is really easy. The people who work on this system did, in my opinion, a great job, and um, I know they're going to be adding new features all the time, which, by the way, um, if you didn't notice it already, take note of the Send Feedback button down in the bottom right-hand corner 
of Google Classroom. If you see features that you'd like added, even though you know other people have already suggested those, go ahead and send feedback and let the team know what you want as part of Classroom because they really look at that feedback and they want to know, you know, what is the number one thing that people want right now? What's the number two thing people want right now? And uh, they're really listening to your feedback, so go ahead and let them know. All right, let's look at the next part of your classroom that you want to get set up. So when we go back to our training class again, we'll see there's a third tab area up here at the top. And this is where you want to set up the details of your class. So I'll go into edit so you can see what that looks like. So here you can put the name of your class, a description, what room the class meets in, um, if any, and then you can put your email address and a Google Drive folder if you have one that's got class materials in it. You can add that right there. And then down here at the bottom you can choose to add materials. Now these are things that would just be there and available all the time. For example, if you have class policies or a syllabus or any kind of materials like that that you'd want students to be able to access throughout the year, then you could go ahead and add them in right there and um, you could direct students to this location when they need to find those materials. So that, that's a pretty nice feature. Okay, so we set our class details in about. Let's learn about creating announcements and assignments. So if we go back over to the stream part of our classroom, you can see that announcement is the default. So this is where I can say um, whatever kind of little updates I've got for my class. So I can say, welcome to our online classroom. And I can just put that. I can add an attachment if I want. Um, I could get something from my Google Drive, I could add a YouTube video or a link to a website. So any of those things are possible and then to post obviously I just click post. But let's take a look at the assignment in contrast because you see I've got a couple more features that are added in here. So I get to title it, I get to add a description if I want to, it's optional. I get to set a due date and if I want this part's optional I can set a time. So <clears throat> these are really important because as near as I can tell, and you guys who know this for sure, please weigh in in the comments. Um, I think that if you set this as an assignment and you set a due date and time, it's automatically going to turn in the student's work at that date and time, whether they have clicked the turn in button or not. So let's take a look at what this looks like. We're going to go ahead and set up an assignment and then I'm going to show it to you from the student's point of view. I think I've got screenshots of all of that ready for you. Alright, so here we are. We're creating an assignment and these are the different options that I can choose. So I chose the Google Drive button and I went over to my drive and I selected this example assignment that I had previously created. And then you really want to take a look at this down arrow over here because this is so cool look at the options. You can have them view the file, you can have them edit the file, and this one's the real miracle. You can have, a, have it make a copy for each student. And when it does that, it's automatically going to set the permissions on that file, it's automatically going to set up a folder structure and put the file where it should be. Um, so that one is the real, like, amazing thing in my opinion. So you can also, if you have multiple classes set up, then you can select which classes you want this file to go into and what the settings should be for each class. So that is pretty cool also. All right, so um, you guys, if you're in my domain, if you're in Huntsville ISD, then you're going to be able to join my sample class and feel free to do that. There's the code on the screen. If you are not in my domain, then you will not be able to participate in this part of the training, but that's okay. I think you're still going to um, get the picture. So let's take a look at what it's going to look like on the student side. So I showed you how I created that assignment on the teacher side and then this is what the student sees on his or her side. So here's the assignment the student can click to open the assignment and when he or she is finished um, the student turn in to turn in the file and let's take a, a closer look at what that looks like so this is what happens on the student side a, a folder called classroom is created a subfolder with each class the student is in is created and then when the student has that assignment distributed to them through classroom with a due date and time, then they're going to get this special turn in button in the top right. So that's one of the things that makes this system so really cool. 
The thing that you really want to tell your students though is to be sure not to click that button until they're really ready to turn the assignment in. When they do that, it's going to change the settings on the file. So let's take a look at what happens when an assignment is quote unquote turned in. So these are the sharing settings on this document distributed through Classroom before it's turned in. So you can see it says um, Harry Hornet, that's my sample student account, is the owner. And uh, Amy Mayer, that's my teacher account, can comment. So I made this assignment as Amy Mayer. Harry Hornet joined the class and accessed the document. Here's what it looks like after the document is turned in. Amy Mayer, the teacher, is now owner, and Harry Hornet, the student, can only view the document. So this is, you know, it's important, but let's say that Harry Hornet needs to keep working on his work. The teacher sees it, she's like, oh, you're not finished with that yet, Harry Hornet, you really need to keep working. So the student can go back to the assignment through Classroom, click the assignment, and then click Unsubmit. And that, um, that can only be done before the due date and time, and that will give the student back the, uh, the rights to edit that document. So if you're um, practicing with your classroom account, these are some things that you might want to do when you create a new class. Um, just some ideas for you. If you have ideas about um, classroom, like how you're using it, uh, things that I didn't cover in this video that have to do with classroom, or you just want to weigh in with features that I left out, or um, anything like that, please let me know in the comments to the video. Um, I always appreciate your feedback, and if you enjoyed this training, or even if you didn't, I would love it if you would fill out this evaluation. I need them to keep up with my trainer certification. So. It's pretty short. Uh, if you want to take a couple of minutes to do that, it would be really great. I hope you enjoyed this little tutorial and it helped you learn how to use Google Classroom and have a great day. Bye.